beautiful uh, prismatic parts, which are all about the weight saving pockets and the beautiful little rads in here, and also scanning scanning these little um, these little ramps and radii. So what I find funny about this is there's so many features on the front here that you could do on a three axis machine, but there's only one, two, three, four, maybe five, four mostly five features on the side. And that, that is what requires a five axis machine. They've got, look at this. You normally see some places you'll see loads of machines or you'll see loads of plastic injection molding machines. Here we see, we see both. We've got a Doosan, a Doosan Milton, which is making uh, some really nice looking kind of hip socket medical parts. Precision in Cork in Ireland to find out how they grew from 1996 being two guys, Victor and Finbar, tool making for the medical industry, to having a huge machine shop with 40 machines. They've got Grobs, DMG Morris, Grupo Parthus. Uh, they do absolutely everything for uh, medical and aerospace industry. So they do injection molding, uh, dye and mold designs, they're making aerospace parts, we're going to see those just shortly. They're making medical um, parts uh, de development work for loads of the Irish uh, big medical manufacturers. Now let's go and have a look. So first of all I mentioned the Grob G350. Now this is obviously a fantastic machine for your five axis work. Now this is because they've got a lot of aerospace brackets and parts for seats and, and stuff like that which needs uh, lots of different ops, lots of different features on lots of different faces and that's what the Grob G350 is perfect for. And again, GMG Mori, now this is a DMU50, so this is again another 5-axis machine. This is instead with a, a, a pallet changer, PH150 pallet changer, which is all about making sure you can set up all of these parts. Look, they've got Lang fixturing, so they've got, I don't know, one, two, three, four, probably got about 10 pallets here. They can set those up, let them run overnight, and I might even be able to do weekend running, depending on the, the number, of, the, the cycle times on the parts you're making here. Now the DMG Mori, again, is perfect for the five axis work for hitting all those different faces on the aluminium parts. And you're gonna see uh, an example of some of the aluminium parts soon. And these are beautiful brackets for the aerospace. I mean, look at the amount of swarf these guys are making. It's absolutely crazy. Um, so these guys, obviously, they've got loads of different five axis machines. They've invested in loads of different types, but they started off with a Haas VF2. Now that obviously is, is a, sounds like a VMC. It is, it's a vertical milling machine, but they put a rotary table on it. And that was their first foray into five axis. And they absolutely loved it. But obviously a VF2 with a rotary table maybe wouldn't quite do all, have the, the, the right kind of capacity for everything. So then they started investing in these uh, Haas machines because they still love the Haas VF2. They invested in the Haas 5 750. Now this is a 750 uh, cube you can machine on this size. And you've got, I think it's a 750 in the X travel. Um, and there's a huge envelope on this machine, so you can fit some massive aluminium parts on, on these Hasses. And they love them so much, they've got seven of these Hass 5X, uh, uh, UMC 5X 750s. And then obviously, the VMCs. Every, every machine shop's got to have a few VMCs. Now, they've got a couple of Hasses, a Doosan, and these were kind of the bedrock of their machine shop before they went into 5-axis. Now, these were in their old site, which they only had six machines, and they've grown, they moved from the old site to the new site uh, in 2013. And this, is, this new site is 16,000 square meters. And that's why they can fit that absolutely crazy number of 40 machines on it. Uh, and that do so the, the Doosan back here, uh, the NM510, N N N they bought that in 2007, and it's still running today, it's 2022. That's absolutely amazing. Uh, so again, loads of Hasses, loads of VMCs. They love the Deuce and love the Hass for a real workhorse of machine for the, the, the proper three axis aluminium parts uh, like these here. So this is all about hogging out big, big pockets. Uh, you've got a few walls here and a few small tapped holes. So it's all about the, the simpler three axis parts. And moving on from the three axis parts, you've got these absolutely lovely five axis, well slightly five axis because they've got a few holes here, a few holes on the side beautiful uh, prismatic parts which are all about the weight saving pockets and the beautiful little rads in here and also scanning scanning these little um, these little ramps and radii so what I find funny about this is there's so many features on the front here that you could do on a three axis machine but there's only one two three four maybe five four mostly five features on the side and that that is what requires a five axis machine it's just so you can do those extra three four five features I mean, you don't have to do set up one, set up two, set up three, set up four, which would take so much more time. So it's all about five axis machines with these beautiful aluminium, aluminium parts. I'm moving over to the big daddy part of the machine shop. Now they've got two massive CMS machines, which are 
kind of like a composite aluminium type machine. Um, and they were for more kind of development work on a big contract they had for an aerospace manufacturer. And they developed the process uh, over the past couple of years from 2019 onwards. And then they actually needed to, to ramp up production. So what they did was bought a, a beautiful big Grupo Parpus machine. This is the Diamond Linear 30. And Victor was talking to me earlier, he said, this machine cuts through aluminium like a hot knife through butter. He absolutely loves this machine. I could probably talk about it for ages. The, a standard that comes with a, a 20,000 RPM spin, 115 kilowatt on an HSK63. You don't get that every day. And it's got a massive, I think it's three by two meter uh, working envelope, which is absolutely fantastic for them. For this big uh, aluminium uh, part, it's a big prismatic part. We can't show you, unfortunately, too much because it's very sensitive. But it's amazing what they can do on this machine. As soon as their contract finishes, though, in maybe a couple of years, they know they can still use it for titanium machining, steel machining. It's used for mold and dye machining back in Italy where they're manufactured. So this is the kind of machine, if you need to do big parts, no matter what kind of parts they are, you can do them on this machine. OK, let's keep going now. So that's aerospace. But TNT Precision are not just specialists in aerospace, they specialize in medical devices, which is obviously it's quite a big thing in Ireland. There's a lot of medical manufacturers. So they've got two DMG Murrays here, mill turn machines. I think they're N are these NTXs, sir? NTX is 1000. NTX 1000. Gen, Gen 2, so these are two NTX 1000 DMG Murray machines. One has an IM Gabar feeder, which is all about uh, high productivity, um, especially when these have got sub spindles and sub turrets, meaning you can do uh, op 10 on one side, op 20 without having to change over. They pass in, pass the parts over to each other with the IM Kabar feeder and the parts catcher. You could be running the whole weekend if you wanted to. Uh, unfortunately, in the other NTX, there is no bar feeder. Uh, I don't think that, uh, there is a part catcher though, so you could still be doing a couple of parts, but still, they're really fantastic machines. And Victor absolutely loves the fact he can do op 10 or op 20 in one hit. Uh, more Haas UMC5 axes, we've talked about these. We've got our Deucen, a Deucen Milton, which is making uh, some really nice looking kind of hip socket medical parts, which unfortunately, Ian, you can't see because they're very sensitive, but they've got a lovely finish and it's a big hip socket. You wouldn't have thought that'd go inside a human body, I guess, but uh, it's, it's interesting to see all these medical parts because we don't see many where I'm from in Sheffield. There's a few medical manufacturers. Um, again, this is part of the seven, roster of seven Haas UMC5 axes machines. Um, but they're doing mostly, the medical is titanium, so it's not just the aluminium, titanium. And that's kind of what got a TNT Precision into, uh, well, it, driving growth was, was difficult to cut materials. It was the Inconels, Hastaloys, and titanium, because they started off doing deflector plates using uh, wire erosion and EDM. And here we've got, okay, so we've got, I guess, is this probably a nylon, uh, nylon cutting? So I guess this might be... Uh, yeah, that looks like a medical part to me. I'm not going to show you it because uh, I, I, I don't know if I can, but again, nylon, so it's loads of different kinds of materials, um, which I guess nylon is all about, um, is that's all about, um, not necessarily wear resistance, but it's about being um, low friction in when it goes into your knee or your hip socket. Uh, a couple more VF2, so these are the first five axis machines that TNT invested in. I think they're the first, first five axis with the trunnion back there, and I think this is another five axis they've got here. And then we're going to move on to what I find absolutely fascinating is um, these guys have got some real design engineering expertise it's not just manufacturing it's not just pumping out aluminium uh, aerospace parts or titanium medical parts if you stay over there and let's go and have a quick look they've got look at this you normally see some places you'll see loads of machines or you'll see loads of plastic injection molding machines here we see we see both we've got a plastic injection molding machine here where they make all the molds and dyes um, obviously on their machines and what they're making is so we've got um, part of a knee here which uh, needs polishing okay so that's a really nice fine finish and if I take off this plastic bit they design the molds that make um, these plastic uh, parts and these parts basically go over if you see there's a there's a, a, a rough finish in there which is where the, the bone will grow over once this um, knee part has been put into your into your femur they put these plastic parts go over um, a little robot grabs these uh, grabs the little pins and then they polish this beautiful finish. I think it's called a drag polishing machine. Um, and so these, these uh, plastic parts help to protect that special bone growth finish uh, on the inside of the part here. And these guys, they will manufacture the, the actual medical part. They'll manufacture the mold and dye that makes these plastic parts. And then they will use this plastic injection molding machine to make the plastic parts. And there's, there is, I mean, to me, there's about four different engineering disciplines that go into designing, manufacturing, and being successful in making this whole system. And they've got boxes full of different sizes of plastic parts here. So they're making those for customers as well. 
And that is what surprised me when we came to TNT was the amount of beautiful machines they've got. Um, their history is, is started in such humble beginnings. And now they've got 40 machines, a massive site. They're doing plastic injection molding, proper design engineering. They're using hyper mill for their, for their, uh, to, re to shave time off the cycle times. They're using group of purpose machines to make massive parts. These guys are right at the cutting edge of technology down in Cork in Ireland.